In this repair video, we're going to be working on an iPhone 6 that was mailed in for no power. This is the same customer that mailed over the iPad Pro, the one that we've worked on, and we accidentally broke the screen. So this is another item the customer mailed in. Now, the first thing I did was I replaced the battery just to see if the phone would power on and no signs of power. Screen looks good. The first thing I want to do is use this white amp meter to see if the phone is drawing any amps. Plug the cable in. Now the meter is supplying 4.9 volts, but the amps being drawn by the phone is zero. The accurate way of testing how many amps is being drawn by the phone is to plug a power supply onto the motherboard. So we bypass the battery, we bypass the charging port, and we just plug power directly onto the board. And that's where the red meter comes in handy because it's used for that purpose. And it's specifically used for iPhones where we have connectors for all iPhones. The meter comes with connectors from iPhone 5 all the way up to iPhone X. And what we're going to do is disconnect the battery from the iPhone's motherboard. I'm wearing gloves and it's going to be hard to disconnect the battery. So Okay. So the connector is going to plug into the charging port of the phone and to the battery FEC connector. And this one is for the iPhone 6. The connector is very easy to plug in, unlike some of the power connectors that we've had before. One from JC, and I have two more here. This is the very, very first one that we've had. It only has a battery connector and not a charging port connector. And we have the iPower. Let's not go over those because that's not the point of this video. Okay, so now we have the connector plugged into the battery and the charging FEC connector area of the board. And plug our meter into this power bank here. We're going to turn the meter on. So voltage being supplied to the phone is 4.1 volts and let's power the phone. We can power the phone by pressing this button. Press and hold. And look at this, immediately the amp meter shows 0 0.337 amps being drawn by the phone. That's not normal. When the phone powers on, the reading should go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1.2, 1.3, and then it settles back down. Right now it's stuck at 0 0.34. So the phone is not booting up, and as you can see, a black screen. Nothing is booting up. 0 0.34 is not a major short, but it could be a short. It could be a short. Or it could be a TriStar issue. While the phone is on, I want to take a look under the thermal cam to see if there's anything unusual. Right over here. We can see that the CPU is on, but we have something unusual down on the bottom center. Let me go to manual mode. I can tell that heat in this area is not usual. This is abnormal. What's down here? It may not be this side of the board, but it could be the other side of the board. And on the other side of the board, this location is the TriStar chip. So we're going to have to remove the board and inspect the back to see what's going on. When we inspect back of the board under a thermal cam, we will be able to pinpoint where the heat is coming from. I'm going to take a minute to disassemble the board from the phone and I'll be back. The board is out. We need to heat up the plate so we can remove it and all the components on the back are found under this plate here. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just heating up the edges of the plate and just like that, we remove the plate. Do we see anything unusual here? Just quick physical inspection. This is the TriStar area right here. And I believe this is the area where it was getting hot from front of the board. So heat could be coming from here showing up on front of the board. I'm going to wait until the board cools down a bit because we applied heat onto it. The board is still hot. Once it cooled down a bit, we can inspect it under a thermal cam and see where heat is coming from. 
a lot of people ask me, uh, which thermal cam do you have? Which one should I buy? Uh, I can tell you one thing. If you want to buy a thermal cam, make sure it's 60 frames per second. Otherwise, you are wasting your money. The ones they have out in the market, the Seek one, the, the Fleur one, or the ones that you connect to your phone, do not waste your money. You need something that's 60 frames per second and 320 by 240. These thermal cams do not come cheap. You can expect to pay thousands, but it's worth it. Almost every repair that I do takes me no more than a few minutes to figure out the problem. And a lot of times it's because of the thermal cam. The camera, the reason the camera is expensive is because it's sampling 60 times per second. You are seeing 60 frames per second on 200, on 320 by 240 pixels. Do not waste your money on cheaper ones because you're going to end up either not using it or you're going to end up looking for the more expensive one in the future. 60 frames per second, 320 by 240. This is what you need to look for. I'm not going to recommend any brand. I use the Fleur E60. This is not only used for electronics. I can use it to find uh, studs on the wall. I can use it to see if there is any hot or cool areas in the store. Maybe I need to fix insulation, maybe uh, stuff like that. This will see it. I'll do a video on the Fleur E60 in the near future, but now I have a lot of things that I need to get done and I'll just pick a time to do it. This is the TriStar area right here. And let's power it on. Look at this. TriStar is the one that's getting hot. The chip itself is getting hot. So TriStar is most definitely the problem. Let's go ahead and replace it. And we'll try again. What we need to do is clean those solder pads. Very nice. And after the TriStar replacement, the phone is still not working. However, the TriStar is testing good. Let's go ahead and test it together. I had to leave this until today because we were running out of time. We're going to use the TriStar tester along with a good working charging flex cable. Okay, and it's a pass. So we know the phone charging circuit is good. And let's take a look at the screen here. As you can see, it's a pass. Right now the phone is still not working. I tested the phone and it's still not working. Let's uh, plug, let's plug an amp meter. Press the power button for the phone. 
and as you can see, the phone is not turning on. Amperage is 0 0.073 and then it goes down to 0. 0 0.073 and then it goes down to 0. So there's something wrong with the phone. Right now it's not the charging circuit, but there's something else wrong with the phone. I want to quickly test a few things on the board to see if we can figure this out quick. Now what I did before I started this video today is remove the CPU shield here. I want to test a few things under it. For example, uh, those caps next to the CPU. I've had issues with those caps before. And I can quickly run through them. Meter in diode mode. Rat probe on ground. And this cap is good. This cap is good. And we have a short here. We have a short here. We know that we have a short on the board. We have a short on PP GPU. The short can be caused by this specific capacitor or it could be caused by components on back of the board, as you see here. So these are the only things that can cause the short. The components on back of the board here, the component in front of the board, the one that we just tested, or the CPU itself. We do not know where the short is coming from. What we're going to do is uh, start by removing this capacitor here to see if we still have a short. I mean, we have a uh, couple major capacitors that could be causing the short. If we still have a short after removing the capacitor, then I'm going to do the same on back of the board. We only have a few capacitors that could short the circuit. If none of them release the short, then the problem is the CPU. And it will be a no fix for the customer. So let's remove this capacitor here. Okay, and the cap is out. Let's test to see if we still have a short. Meter in diode mode. And we still have a short. Let's flip the board. We're going to go to the PMIC area here. And we have a couple of capacitors that could possibly cause the short. So I'm going to remove this, 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 and this. You know, the first thing I want to do is inspect the board under a thermal cam to see if we are able to see where the short is coming from. We may not be able to see it but we're going to try. Yeah, we cannot tell. I mean, the board is not receiving any power, so nothing is going to get hot on the board. The quickest way to test for a short right now is to remove the capacitors. I can easily put them back. And it will save me a lot of time from having to inject voltage and do all that stuff. We still have a short. We still have a short. And yes, we still have a short. And I have all those caps on the side, so I can put them back. And we still have a short. That's it, the problem is the CPU. And right now we're gonna call it off on this repair and let the customer know. So unfortunately it's a no fix, but uh, at least we got to go through the process of uh, troubleshooting and attempting to fix this board. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.